All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Chris Prefontaine, who is in Rhode Island. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing awesome. Thank you, John. Yeah, and Chris is a three-time best-selling author of the real estate on your terms and new rules of real estate investing and real estate investing for women with Monica Sawyer. He's also the founder and CEO of smartrealestatecoach.com and the host of the Smart Real Estate Coach podcast. And today we're going to talk about something interesting I'm actually fascinated to learn about and that is uh, buying and selling real estate on terms. And now Chris, you're, you buy and sell businesses and, and property on a regular basis. What does it mean to buy on terms? Sure. So for us, it means different things, John, but I'll define how we do it. Uh, and when mm -hmm. I say we, it's a family business we have. Uh, we're buying homes mostly in pro other properties on either owner financing, lease purchase, or subject to existing financing, meaning it stays in the seller's name even though we buy the property. All those three things don't require banks and don't require us signing personally pledging assets. That's the biggie. So never is a loan in our name. Right. So explain how explain the mechanics of that to uh, to somebody learning about this for the first time. Yeah, it's actually good for someone learning real estate for the first time because let's take lease purchase and mm -hmm. let's say you're my seller. I'm going to put your home under agreement with a lease agreement. The deed is not transferring. The right. cost for me to do that in my agreement with you as a seller is a whopping ten dollars. Right. So this, this, I've mitigated risk. I've mitigated cash out. I'm going to then find a buyer. If we have time, we can define that, but a buyer who yep. needs time. I'm going to put them in your home when I do that. And only when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and either pay you or if there's debt on the property, I'm going to pay the bank, the underlying bank directly. I'm going to collect something more from my buyer, obviously. And so in doing that, all of our deals, we actually create three paydays per deal. And I say that because most real estate deals, what you do a deal, you get a check, right? Yep, so this yep. is three paydays per deal, every single deal. Wow, that's uh, that's fascinating. And and how um, and so somebody so, so break it down a little further even because if uh, somebody says okay that still sounds complicated I don't really know how I would even go about this. Okay, so let's go back to 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 how you, how this comes about. Mm -hmm. uh, we speak with people who were expired listings, meaning they were on the market, they didn't sell conventionally. Yep. There's a whole bunch now, pre and post COVID. Sure. Um, we talk to for sale by owners and uh, we talk to uh, our, what we call absentee owners, people that have second homes and they're out of state or yeah. something like that. Excellent. And obviously, so, so when, somebody is, when somebody is selling by themselves, they're not using a real estate agent, they're selling by owner and they can't shift their house for one reason or another and they've taken it off the market. Why, and so why is it an attractive proposition for them to work with someone like you? Yeah, great question. So let's answer this generically, not because of COVID, because everything's better sure. because of COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so usually it's the person that doesn't need the cash right now that's going to net more if they go our route, because we're willing to pay market value as long as they have the time. So who, right. it's better to say, who does it not fit for? It doesn't mm -hmm. fit for that seller that might be going to look with his or her family for the next house, and they need that equity to move to the next house. If they don't, this is a phenomenal way to... Uh, to get the most out of your property and get it over time, three, four, five, ten years. Yeah, no, that's uh, and obviously, okay. So there's a target buyer that they have to have. They have to have some level of patience, obviously, as you say, if, yeah. if this is going to be attractive to them. So then, from from, uh, is this something that somebody could try to transition into doing full time? Is there enough business there for someone to be able to do that? Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll put some metrics to this. So most people come to us that are trying to transition from corporate. Uh, COVID has really put a, put, put some mm -hmm. gas on that fire, right? So they're trying to stay home and work and um, we help them with a transition plan, but just to put a metric to it, to, to answer your question, is there enough business? Those three paydays that I talked about, uh, they yep. range around the country from a low of 45,000 per deal to a high of a quarter of a million. We're about 75 grand. We're the lower end of that average with all our students. But that's pretty significant if you think about it. So you, you take the ideal business model and you say, mm -hmm. wow, okay, on this real estate deal, I get cash right away when I do the deal. I get cash every month and then I get cash when it cashes out. That's the ideal business model. And that's 75 sure. grand a pop. There's so many students that don't have to do, you know, 10, 20, 30 deals a year. 
you do a few and you're okay, you probably replace your job income. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it sounds, uh, it sounds, it sounds like something that's quite, uh, quite lucrative here. And, and so when you have people come to you to say, okay, I want to transition into this full time, what are some of the things that you advise them to do? Um, okay. So managing expectations is a, is a very important one sure. uh, because you and I both know you have the late night shows and the commercials that say, you know, real estate, <laughs> get rich tomorrow. I, I'm yeah. the first one to tell you it's not going to be tomorrow. We yeah. work real hard as a family company on, on what we call time to first deal, but it's not tomorrow. It's going to take mm -hmm. some time, four months, six months. Some people, if they've got some mental blocks, eight or nine months. Uh, but in my opinion, there's no bigger rate of return and rate of return on time. Than, than what we're doing here. So I would tell them, number one, manage expectations. Number two, simply get a plan with someone like, like if it's me, I'm not so naive to think it's our niche is the only niche, but if it's me or my son or son-in-law, we're gonna give you an exact plan. So a gentleman from California to use an example came to us and he said, I wanna transition in two years, February of 17, he said that. In about May of 20, uh, sorry, May of 19, we made a transition with him. So we almost nailed it to the T. So the metrics mm -hmm. are very predictable as long as you're willing to give it the time. Yeah, and, and give it the time. And so how much of an investment of time and, and energy is it if you want to be successful? Probably would depend, John, on their goals, meaning I could sure. get a single person that says, hey, I get no overhead, I could go at this tomorrow. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike had a newborn, a job that paid him very, very well, but he's away from his family. So he needed a little bit more of a ramp to replace a six-figure income. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Brian in, in, in Chicago comes to mind. He joined us only a year ago in that short time as left his job after 17 years, home with his, his, his son every day and his wife. I mean, it's a life changer if you think about it, especially with COVID. Oh, I know, uh, absolutely. And I think, and I think that that's one of the big transitions that's happening. I think it started around the financial crisis last time. And I think it's obviously been accentuated during COVID is that people are, I guess people are far less less in, inclined to commit themselves to a company, to move to an expensive place, to live near a building, because they know next crisis that comes along, they're first out the door. Maybe they're stuck with a, a big mortgage in a high, you know, in, yeah. in a high cost area, and now suddenly no job. So I think people are more and more looking for opportunities, obviously to work for themselves or to work remotely or whatever. So I think it's a, it's a great time for, for people to take, that, uh, to take that kind of leap. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, if I use Brian's example again, 17 years of jumping on a plane every single week. He said to me mm -hmm. this year, Thanksgiving, he said, Chris, normally I'd get home Wednesday night. I had this whole week with my family. And he gets emotional right. about it. It's a, kind of a big deal. So I'm, if someone's coachable and they can manage their expectations, mm -hmm. we can give them a very, very predictable plan. Excellent. Okay, so uh, compare this with other types of, of real estate investing that maybe people are a little more familiar with. So, you know, some people get into flipping houses, you know, rehabbing yeah. them, etc. Renting apartments that, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting into that, whether it's rent, actually buying, you know, and renting apartments or whether it's getting into some kind of syndication or whatever. Yeah. So what's the difference between yeah. this and those types of investing? Okay, luckily I've done them all, except for large, large apartments. I, literally, I've done them all since 1991, so I've been going at this for a while. Um, I will tell you the main thing is, especially for a new person, when you flip a house, I've done all the things I'm going to say here. When you flip a house, when you sell a house as a realtor, when you, um, any one of the methods, you're usually getting one paycheck, right? When you build a house, yeah. one paycheck. They're good paychecks. I'm not, I'm not uh, watering that down. However, they're one paycheck. So uh, when I used to do homes, let's say we built 50 homes. January comes along, what are you doing? You gotta start all over again. There is no, yeah. you might have a referral or two, but you are starting from zero. When mm -hmm. you start setting up the three payday system that we've trademarked, and I put 15 deals on the books, I have 15 deals paying me for two to 10 years. I can predictably yeah. put that on a spreadsheet with some fallout and say, here's my pay. Oh, I can step off the treadmill now. That's the big difference. The three payday system is huge. Now, as far as a big apartment, syndications, things of that nature, if your personality is such that you don't mind raising money, talking to people about investing in you, et cetera, okay, that's fine. For me to sleep good at night, I don't want to sign personal loans and I don't want mm -hmm. to go soliciting money. It's just not what I want to do now, having gone through all of that already and having gone through two or three cycles. You, you know, you start to learn mm -hmm. the hard way. 
Yeah. And I think that's the important, I think that's the important thing just to reinforce again, the, like you said, is you're not signing, putting your name on stuff. You're not holding, you know, you're not, so there, you're, you're definitely mitigating risk to some degree, right? Absolutely. I, I'll never say risk-free to your point, but sure. yes, you're mitigating it. Good point. I call it recession resistant, John. There's a lot of people, again, in the real estate world saying recession proof. There is no such thing as recession proof because you and I and the billionaires don't know what's going to happen in the next nine months here with the craziness. Yeah. But I will say that I built this niche and then brought the family in after the OE crash, specifically because of the OE crash lessons to weather all storms. And when COVID hit us, knock on wood, we, ex we, ex we went through the roof of that business three times, the business, and so did our students. And so that's why people from the wholesaling industry, the flipping industry are flocking to our niche because it's proven itself uh, immensely. Yeah, so you referenced the, the, the 2008 uh, financial crash and obviously the housing market crash. And yeah. you said there were some, there were some big lessons that you learned from that. What were they? Painful. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, big the, painful Very lessons. painful, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the main one was, the reason we built this terms niche, the main one was taking out bank loans and buying things conventionally. Even after being a realtor all those years and building homes all those years and being an investor and a developer, I didn't know this terms niche existed. Now, albeit it didn't exist exactly how we built it, but deals like we're doing have been around since late 1800s. It's just that nobody mm -hmm. put a system around it. So one is no signing on, on bank loans. Um, and the second is just being through all that, just getting a little seasoning. You know, it's like uh, success is a real crappy teacher. But if you have someone that's gone through cycles and gone through some storms like we're going through right now, the politics and the COVID, well, that's a great teacher because that's yeah. how you recreate things. So all of the above. Yeah, you know, and, and you're absolutely correct is uh, sometimes uh, success doesn't teach us that many lessons or we don't recognize them or we're just unconsciously, unconsciously competent. So we don't actually even know how we were successful. But right. for sure. The, the but for sure the tough times they're the great teachers uh, i know somebody who once told me that a friend of theirs had two two things up on their office wall one was their harvard mba and the other was their first chapter 11 and if anybody ever and they used to say to people look at those which one do you think i learned more from 100 percent agree yeah and of course yep. it was the, the chapter 11 yeah um yeah. So, um, so what's a, what, what kind of person is attracted to this? I mean, what kind of appetite do you have to have or, or what kind of person have you seen really excel at this? Uh, that's a good one. Um, we've got quite the, we run the gamut on both mm -hmm. age and experience with us. We run from early twenties to late seventies. We run from corporate America to investor that unfortunately gets steered wrong with other niches to investor who is very successful looking to add this to their to their portfolio but i can tell you what the underlying thing is in all that and that is some burning why because it doesn't matter if i'm going to help you open a restaurant i want to make sure yeah. it's a burning why and a reason and that you're coachable well have a great experience together here's what you say john uh one pick a niche that you like could be not even in real estate number mm -hmm. two Pick someone in that niche that has what you and I just said, that experience, right? So you can be able to adapt with them. And number three, the biggie, run strong with blinders on and no shiny objects for 36 months. You'll have a great experience with that formula, no question. Yeah, and, and that's great. And I love that message. I mean, love you say like run with blinders on for 36 months and you have a great experience. And because as you referenced earlier in this, you know, we live in this culture today where everybody's is telling you, oh, everything is instant. You should like tomorrow. Success. Yeah. Tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. That's too late. I want it today. In fact, I want it yeah. right now. Um, and so I love when, when people like yourself say, okay, this can be very good and be very successful, but there is a journey you have to go on and it's not an overnight thing and it's not a get rich quick scheme. Um, right. Obviously, uh, how much time and effort you put into it is going to dictate the speed of that. Yeah, if it were that, everybody would do it, right? And then, you, then yeah. it wouldn't be as lucrative. No, no, absolutely. And so, um, I mean, during this, uh, during this COVID time, uh, you say that this is a niche that is actually becoming stronger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot stronger because, think about it, the banks, yes, the rates are good. Everybody says the rates are great, great. Yeah. But they push the bar up so high for people to get that loan that some of those deals are falling apart at the table with good people with high credit and good down payment. They want more down payment, more reserve, higher credit. So those buyers come to us because we give them the on-ramp and the time and it's a win, win, win. That's a healthy relationship. The seller's excited because they couldn't sell it 
because the banks are tightening up. Mm -hmm. The buyer thought they lost hope because they couldn't buy. And as the investor, we win. That's a very healthy triangle. And so when you have mm -hmm. that type of environment, it'll, it'll sustain itself and thrive during this. And it's doing that right now. So how do you find the sellers? Um, most of our sellers, and now there's always exceptions, but most of our sure. sellers are going to come from the uh, for sale by owner, for rent by owner, in mm -hmm. the expired listings that couldn't sell conventionally. And no matter how hot or cold or flat the market is, there's expired listings always, always. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the reasons? What are some of the reasons for expired listings? Just for out of interest uh, for people watching. Yeah. Uh, price, right? So, right. And, and so we come in and unlike the investors that are looking for a 60% buy on the, on the value, we say, no, we'll pay your market value. Let's look at it. How much time do you have? So mm -hmm. price, uh, functionality and functionality is true, but let's say we take it. The buyers that work with us are less picky because we're giving them an on-ramp that they otherwise mm -hmm. couldn't have. And so some of that gets overlooked. Okay. I don't really don't care about that issue that needs to be fixed. I can do that. I'm handy. So functionality and price are the two main ones. And then COVID has changed a lot because we're getting nice, nice, nice homes from professionals like doctors and people that have extra homes that just don't want to deal with it. And they don't want a bunch of showings types and through with realtors. Yeah, and so yeah. they're loving what we're doing. And we, we put that under agreement literally virtually uh, and get it mm -hmm. done for them. And then you touched on that there. So that's the seller side on the buyer side, then the, the types of buyers. Okay, good. The buyers would be people that need time because of credit repair. They, they have to enhance their credit to get a better loan. Great. Uh, the people that get to the closing table nowadays would say a jumbo loan, you know, the higher loans. And yep. the banks, some banks aren't underwriting those right now. And the ones that are have very strict criteria. So those are good. Uh, job relocation, state relocation. A bank is going to look for two years of seasoning. Well, you just relocate. You have a nice down payment. They won't let you buy. They won't let you get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So you, you can buy. You can come through us. So there's, those are all valid, strong buyers that just need time. Yeah, and it's interesting just that you touched on that because, yeah, people think that just because uh, interest rates continue to be low and at historic lows and you get bombarded with all of these, you know, offers and all of that yeah. doesn't mean you'll make it through the underwriting process. No, let me, let me say this, John. Here's a, here's a couple extreme examples. And lately, sadly enough, this is weekly. We had a student in uh, Colorado. We have one, Chad. He was talking to the seller. It was a high-end home. He said, I got it sold. The seller said, I got it sold. 1.3 million. The buyer came to the table with 10% down, 770 credit, and some reserves. That was mm -hmm. good pre-COVID. Right when COVID hit, they flushed that loan out. They said, nope, you need two years reserves, you need higher credit, you need 20% down. Yeah, that yeah. same buyer went to Chad, the seller said, okay, I'll let you put it on an agreement on terms. And we struck it the same deal, same buyer, seller couldn't do it, because conventionally it wouldn't go. We got it done through terms, the seller just has to wait two years, but they get their full price. Imagine that, yeah. it was gonna die. Yeah. No, no, that's that's fantastic, and that's that's so interesting for people listening because, like we said, uh, it seems that it's it's so easy to, you know, get a loan, buy a, an investment property, or flip it, or whatever. But uh, you know, given our experience over the last uh, over this year and going back to 2008, as we um, discussed earlier, like I'm from Ireland and I came here during the dot com era in the late 90s, right? So yeah. I have been through and, and Silicon Valley and all that. So I've been through the dot-com implosion, 9-11, the financial crisis, now COVID. So I guess what I'm hearing from the universe is we need to be prepared for a crisis every couple of years, some kind of uh, unexpected event. Um, therefore, you have to be a little bit more discerning in, in where you invest your energy. Super interesting that you said that, John, because yes, those, the minis are there that you just said. And then if you look historically, go back as far back as you can take it. You can t talk to history teachers, 100 years, major crisis like we're going through right now. And then the yeah. minis that you just talked about, and you and I both lived through all three of them. So fun stuff, but they're going to happen. So you might as well set yourself up with a barrier, with the bubble wrap, so to speak. Yeah. And, and like I said, I think the appetite now because of technology and all of that the, um, and connectedness, the appetite for people to do things on their own is so much greater than it ever has been. And I think there's a lot of people out there who, who want to be entrepreneurs, who want to do something themselves, but they just don't know where to start. So something like what you're outlining today is, is fantastic. And as you say, it's, it's, not a, it's not a no risk, but it's a, it's a lot lower risk than some of the other investing options in real estate. Yeah, love to help them. It's an exciting time right now. The next nine months, here's what I'm telling my students. The next nine months, or for however long the chaos happens, 
we have an opportunity to set up a literally a decade of income when done right. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Um, well, listen, Chris, uh, we're coming to the end here. All of Chris's information will be below this video. So how to contact him and learn more about how you could get in on this business. But before we go, Chris, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more. Yeah, they can just go to smartrealestatecoach.com. If you want to put a slash action after that, I'll give them a free strategy call, John, because uh, our time was short, obviously, and I want to make sure they get some value. So mm -hmm. smartrealestatecoach.com forward slash action. Happy to chat with them. It'd be myself, Brian, who I mentioned, actually, with the Chicago story, or my son-in-law, Zach, and we can't wait to chat with people. Yeah, no, fantastic. I, I love this. I think it's uh, I think it's very interesting, and I encourage people to to check it out um, and take a little bit more control over your future. Uh, listen, Chris, it's been a pleasure. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, John.